Lying and Adam! Woohoo! <laughs> I forgot to put the wheels up. Look! No wheels! See if the single start. Clip up. <laughs> South traffic Golf Sierra Bravo running here, Kilo main apron. Taxi Alpha 2 zero 03 right. It's all got a bit busy. <laughs> Right, slightly nervous, it's not my aeroplane again. Go for me, Kilo entering 03 right. Sidewell so traffic from Adam 1 entering the taxi for 03 grass. Sidewell. So Sidewell, so Golf, Sulu, Alpha, Charlie, Echo on the main apron, taxi to Alpha 2 for Jackson. Cell traffic, Golf, Golf, Echo, taxi in 4 to Alpha 1. Zero three left departure. Right, T wave trim is fixed. Wind and weather is just about suitable. Awareness: we've got one departing, one behind, one in the circuit. It's busy. Uh, visor is down. Engine feels good. And a full power check. So we're traffic from Adam 1 lining up for 03 right for immediate departure, Sywell. So it's neutral. Going forward on the bar. Lifting off. So that was a very uh, benign takeoff. We've got about two or three hundred feet a minute climb rate. It's certainly no Mosta 185. Sorry if I'm not talking much at the moment, it's more because I'm trying to uh, get a feel for this aircraft in a busy, busy circuit. Flying an Adam! Woohoo! Almost nil wind today. I'm going to climb straight out from here. Right, so initial thoughts on the Adam. For my weight, bear in mind my flying weight when I'm kitted up, helmet is about 86 kilos. Last time I weighed myself, um, that's fairly accurate. Um, so the Atom 80 is a very leisurely takeoff. Just going to avoid some people's houses. So right now I'm uh, I'm averaging just under 200 feet a minute at full power. Again, I've got my averager on here. It is a nil wind day. It's a very moisture rich day today. Uh, and according to Ben. I did check as well. Uh, I've got 10 litres of fuel on board, which is enough for over three hours of flying. The one beauty of these little engines uh, I've always admired is the fact that, uh, I mean, this Atom 80 is a derivative of the um, the old Top 80, mini plane Top 80. And uh, pretty much they don't really burn loads. They can be really, really fugal. So even if you fly it flat out, it's always going to be about three litres an hour burn rate. 
So Ben has given me a few pointers on the uh, on the handling, and uh, it is very smooth around the middle, but will very it should carve a lot more when pushed, which is what you want from a soaring wing. And I'm only going back to my gliding days. You don't want a wing that you've got to really push hard and keep in the turns. You want a wing that will keep you in that turn. Because if you're trying to core or centre, you really need it to be able to cope with that. And just, you're not fighting to hold it in and fight the conditions as well. Right, one thing I have forgotten to do. <laughs> I've forgotten to put the wheels up. So we're in the, uh, the, the Ben Ashman Skunk Works at the minute, where he actually makes these wonderful creations. So the bit I'm actually interested in is, is the mechanism at uh, the front and how to actually operate the undercarriage. So Ben's going to give me a quick overview of how to do this. So excuse the cables, I'm just going to put the camera on the side and he's just going to run me through how this all works. Yeah, okay. So if I lift up here, what we'll do is retract the wheels. So if you take the green handle, pull yep. the rope out of the jam cleat. Yeah. That's it. Now just drop the uh, green handle down on the right side. Now grab hold of the red handle, just pull straight back and pull it into the jam cleat. That's it. It's as, as simple as that. <laughs> I like that. Now I to, like simplicity. <laughs> now to open the wheels back out, take the red handle yep. and pull the rope out of the jam cleat. Drop to the left side. Yep. Now pull the green handle, pull it straight back. Pull it hard with tension, that's it, and you feel the clunk as the latch There's goes down. There's a nice down. clunk there, isn't there? That's it, and now the wheels are positively locked. When you're in the air as well, you can reach back, grab hold of the undercarriage leg to pull it back to make sure it's solid. Right. And you, if it's spongy, you know it hasn't latched, so you need to just address that by pulling a little bit harder on the rope. Brilliant. But it's, um, it is very, very simple and easy to use in the air. That down to the side. It's the wheels away. Look, no wheels. Well, they are there. So I'm going to carry on climbing up a bit, so I've got a little bit more height to play with. Noting there's some showers over there, I've got Northampton over there. This is the flight I actually did with Ben last time I came here, well, I don't know, 16 months ago, 18 months ago. So, far position is much further forward than, uh, than my PB, so my PB is about there. We're so focused on climbing out and uh, getting away from the circuit. Definitely a few rain showers around, so I'm going to try and get clear of those. Yeah, lots of showers around today. I was hoping today would be nice and thermic, so I could actually utilise the, uh, the thermal side of the wing. But I think I'll have to save that for another time. If I get my hands back on it, Ben. Wow, there's a big shower over there. Big, big shower over there. Hopefully this bit, which is coming towards us, is going to be nice. Right. Do a quick hazel check, because I would like to try the stall out to see how it feels in the stall. Right. Just going to do some clearing turns. That'll give me a feel for it. Oh, Ben, I see what you mean. Yes. Oh, that carves. Oh, that carves around. Let's reverse it. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Back 
through my wake. I've got to keep a little bit of power on. This engine doesn't seem to like idle at the minute. So we're going to go for a little bit of a low power stall and see what happens. It's all still good. And we just have a nod. See what happens there, and we just have a nod. Oh, lovely! The wing designs that Ben sees me involved with just feel lovely, absolutely lovely. That fingers, 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 fingers. Do a quick turn, clear. Oh, yes, that's definitely one that will get you into a thermal. Oh, yes. One thing I have to do every now and again is actually pull the bar in. And that bar pressure actually is really, really quite heavy when you want to go fast. But will it hold it up? Yes, it will. Full bar in and climbing slightly. It just shows how efficient these wings are with the Atom 80. It's nearly 50 miles an hour there. Ground speed. Easing off. Well, I think I'm going to head back in because I want to try and get here before that rain shower hits. Sidewalk traffic, sidewalk traffic. This is Adam 1, overhead the reservoir, rejoining for runway 03 right overhead. Sidewalk. Right, let's see how quickly we can get back in. That is definitely a hard pull. Right, while I've got time, I'm going to see if I can get the undercarriage back in. And the carriage locked. Sidewall traffic, sidewall traffic from Adam 1 in the overhead descending for runway 03 right. Sidewall. Darwin checks, fuel, I know I've got enough awareness. Lots happening, no one on final I can hear. Wind is light, knows where steering is straight. There's no hand throttle and I am still secure. Sidewall traffic, Madam 1, zero, final zero, 03 right, sidewall. Right, I'm down. Looking long. Oh, that's nice in pitch. A little bit lumpy. Sidewalk so traffic from Adam 1. Zero three right vacated.
Well, not my best landing, but I do admit there's a lot going on today. There's a lot going on today. But I got down before the rain shower anyway. So just to bring my concluding thoughts, I say concluding thoughts, they're going to be slight ramblings, but it was just to cover a few more of the details that were not covered during the flight. And that's more to do with the construction of the aircraft. And hopefully we'll be seeing now a little bit more of a, just a panning of the wing. And the first point of note is actually the greater surface area. It's about 75% dual skinned. And I noticed that in flight that it uh, performed slightly different. It was much more flatter in its glide. Um, and actually responded very well in the turns, but by losing the under camber, it, it generates a very different polar curve. It's a very flat polar curve, um, which actually meant it come in, came in a lot faster than I was expecting. And again, wasn't my best landing. Because as you can see, the strut, the, the, the cross members are all inside the dual skin. Uh, hopefully you can see that without it getting glared out. Um, the other point to note, if you look at the back of uh, the machine on the, uh, the pylon is this t little material fairing, which is very nice. Uh, because there was no reserve chute, it's got the top box with the Adam flash. Hopefully you can see that. The undercarriage, and I felt very, very embarrassed that I completely forgot to put the undercarriage on. Right, one thing I have forgotten to do, <laughs> I've forgotten to put the wheels up. Yeah, the whole point of the Adam apart from the, the fantastic wing, is the fact that it's got retractable undercarriage. And it took me about 20 minutes to realise it's got air brakes on it, which was reducing my climb rate. The moment the wheels went away, the climb rate massively improved. So that was my fault. Um, and I say, this is, uh, this is probably a close up or a closer view than you would normally get. These are the, uh, the kind of fairings that when this wheel recedes into here and sits behind this, it makes it much more aerodynamic. Um, you can't see the mechanism, mechanism inside, but it's a very slick mechanism that Ben and I ran through earlier. Um, but to say, the, uh, the performance with the Atom 80, uh, Ben asked me to note that I am technically over, about six kilos over the maximum weight for the Atom 80, but he does want me to fly the Moster version, which apparently he calls the Spitfire version. And I do really would like to fly the Moster powered version of this aircraft. Um, I say it's the same construction that is on the Foxwing, except this uh, ODL material. I do really like this ODL material um, and the multiple colour schemes. These are apparently infinitely customisable, even down to these pockets can all be custom coloured, so you can change it and pretty much make your own design. So if you've seen on the recent video where I flew Mark's PB, it's still got this carbon baton here to stop this fluttering and I noticed on my last flight uh, which was yesterday that as I was pulling the bar in to go fast that panel was fluttering ever so slightly it's not a problem it's just annoying that it flutters but overall Adam would I buy it as an atom powered for soaring if I had a smooth enough runway yes would I buy it as a Mosta 185 powered machine yes definitely because it would give me that extra power to get up. The, the, the climb for me, as I said, I was overweight on this machine, was about 200 feet a minute. Uh, with the Mosta, it's going to be well in excess of that and we'll climb away. Ben did also mention to me that to actually reach the handles for retracting and extending the undercarriage, you kind of almost need to take the shoulder straps off, which for me is a bit awkward, but that's what's necessary to do it. Um, he only really flies with the lap strap any, anyway, but for me, that would be something I'd have to uh, adjust to. Overall, I really did enjoy flying it. Flying an Adam! Woohoo! Uh, it took me back to my gliding days because as you were flying it around, the handling, so we'll move on to the handling side now, the handling of the wing was completely different. 
in that it carves through the sky. You pull in the roll and it just wants to go round. So if you're trying to hook into a thermal and get into that thermal really quickly, it will just carve straight into it. Whereas the PB is going to be a little bit more sedate getting into that turn. Uh, and that for me just was amazing. So I think with, a, with the Moster and this Adam Wing, it's going to be an absolute fantastic combination to go and have a real carving play in the sky. The Atom version being really light, burning very little uh, aircraft starting outside. Um, we have a micro light enhancing the audio. Uh, the main point for me is if you want a soaring machine, go for the Atom 80. If you want a Spitfire version of the same machine, Adam with retracts, um, then it's going to be the Moster powered for me. Uh, that pretty much is it. So hopefully that's given you a flavour. Again, this is just one flight on this machine but it still makes me smile and uh, thinking about pulling that undercarriage away uh, and just carving around the sky with this wing I think it's it's got it's going to have its own fans so I still love my PB at the moment the PB with my Moster is, is going to be it but if I was to ever change it in the future it would be the Adam with the Moster so we'll wrap this video up here I hope that's been helpful for those that have been wanting to know more about this I know there's going to be people asking the question what about an electric version I think electric version might struggle, but other than that, we'll leave this here, and until next time, everybody, fly safe.